and welcome to a new uh, TV show that Gore and Recreation Department is working with GoCat on. I'm Cindy Hazelton from Gore and Recreation Department, and I'm going to be joined today by one of our own Gorham residents from ExtremeAerialView.com. His name is Steve Gerard, and he's joining me today. Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you? Well, welcome to GoCat. <laughs> Thank you. So, Steve, I just want to have a living room conversation with you about what you do, about your business, and about how, how it, you see it evolving. And then I'm going to throw in some things about what I think Extreme Aerial View um, and I'll start right off by saying, you know, people at home are going to know this as the drone. Yeah, the you don't want to use around. that. Okay. I, I mean, for marketing reason, I don't use drone word because uh, if you look at the news, drones is a bad, very bad reputation lately. Um, I use a quadcopter, and most of the time, you know, people say, "Oh, that's a drone." They said, "No, it's a quadcopter." It changed the way people look at it, and they're fine with it. So. You know, if we can use a quadcopter, I mean, go ahead if you want to use a drone, I'll use the quadcopter. Okay, well, maybe I can help uh, educate everybody else as well. Yeah. So you've got this quadcopter, and it probably, um, for, for a person at home, now I, I'm going to tell everybody at home that you called our office, a uh, uh, child at our day camp program, and said, hey, you know, you're doing this overnight thing, how about if I get some aerial shots of it, and uh, we can show the kids what they look like. And I thought that was the greatest idea that we've ever had anybody <laughs> approach us with. And, and of course I said yes, and I thought it would be a great idea for yeah, you to come out. So, so, so in case you didn't see it at home, uh, Steve, tell us, tell everybody you know, what you did. You called me up and we had all our waivers and you came out to Shaw Park yep. and tell everybody what you did. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Giada, my daughter, she said, uh, would it be cool if we get some aerial videos? And because she saw my quad all the time, I do this full time. and. She said, uh, would it be cool if we can see all the tents and we're going to be by the river or a lake, a pond, and all my friends be playing around? I said, sure, let me reach out and see if I can do something, you know, for the recreation of Gorm. And, uh, well, I came over and did a great video. There was a great aerial with all the kids. And I think it's a great way to ed educate the kids, you know, starting young and, and understand what it is. And we didn't, we didn't have the chance to talk to them much, you know, but uh, I think that I did something in the other school in Gorm. Yes. And explain to them what it is uh, about privacy, safety. It's this is what it's all about: respecting people's privacy and educate people and fight safe. So, that was great. Now, I've seen the, you know, this quadcopter business um, around, and yeah, it, it has gotten a bad rap on, you know, how some people are choosing to use it. Yeah. However, I've also seen, and, and I really want to talk with you about some of the greater positive things about it. I was recently at a recreation conference where they opened a brand new playground, and this was a big do in this neighborhood. It was not in Maine, 
and so all the dignitaries were there, and yep. everybody was there. And uh, there was a, a person there with a quadcopter recording the whole thing for this playground dedication. And, and as soon as I walked in, walked into that playground and I saw it, I was like, oh, this is another great idea. Yep. This is a great use for this kind of technology and how we can, how we can benefit from having this kind of uh, exactly. activity. So um, let's talk a little bit about, let's touch on, you know, okay, Big Brother's watching. My neighbor's snooping in my bedroom yeah. window. They're, <laughs> they're watching my backyard. They're looking at my grill. Uh, you know, the satellite's already going by, and they know, you know, how many clothes I have on my clothesline. Yeah. So let's put all that away, because yep. that's just, let's talk about some good stuff. What? How are you doing, you know, with Extreme Aerial View? What kind of stuff uh, are you doing? Do a lot of uh, uh, commercial for, like, bars on the beach, hotels. Um, also get uh, a lot of real estate listings. You know, that's, you know, okay, ocean so, front, lake front. Okay. That's great, you know, because... You know, those properties, they very high up in pricing. So yeah. people, mostly up from out of state, who buy those. So instead of travel all the way here, if we can get a great aerial view of the location of the house and the mm -hmm. land around it, mm -hmm. that's a, you know, that's a winner. <laughs> well, and, you know, let's talk old school. So an airplane flew over, yeah. took a picture of your property. You know, Google goes by all the time. We all have Google Earth. We yep. all can look down on our yard. You got that one second captured in time, and that's it. Yep. Um, so now in a, in a uh, I, I would imagine in a real estate uh, concept that that would be huge that oh. you can actually go out and capture that entire property. What, what happens if you go to a property and you got neighbors, you know, they're not selling their house, they see you come in, what happens? I, I always do that when, you know, I got very tight neighborhood, I go and knock at the doors at each, on each side of neighbors. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you know, like I said, it's all about education. What I'm doing, I'm going to be flying around for 15 minutes. You know, if you have a problem with it, most people love it, you know, yeah. and if they give me a hard time, I said, what about I go up and I give you a couple of pictures of your house from up there? And they're like, okay, go ahead, and you can fly, no problem. Yeah, so yeah. it's always about education. That's the, that's the main thing. Yeah. So um, so you've got some real estate going on um, and some promotional videos for some commercial. Um, let's talk about, you know, I'm thinking... I know it's it's probably pretty difficult in a snowstorm because this is pretty expensive toys yeah. you got here, yeah. and you don't take that out in the snow. But if we really wanted to, maybe during cleanup, you know, the day after a snowstorm, it's always beautiful, yep. and you want to see where the where things were. We could talk public safety exactly with this kind of thing. What are you What are you learning in your industry about using this for public safety? I know some people who uh, works on building um, a system to uh, release like life jacket. So you're on the beach, it's a rough sea out there, somebody's drawing. Yep. Why do you want to send somebody else, or yep. risk another life? You can send a drone, and with the camera, it tilt 90 degrees down, so you can see exactly where you are, where the person's drawing, yep. release the life jacket. That's one thing, if so many things it can be yeah. done with the drone, you know? And that's a tiny one, you can lift, like I think one is like uh, 10 to 15 pounds with like eight propellers. That's but oh. unit is like twelve thousand so. dollars. Yeah, that's that's pretty yeah. deluxe. Yeah. <laughs> deluxe version. So so let me just uh, let folks at home know that your down east accent isn't quite a main one. Where are you no, from? No, I'm from Switzerland. I Switzerland. came here, um, United States, in 2005. Mm -hmm. Got my citizenship in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, been here, yeah, ten years. I yeah. got an eight year old. Been so, in Gorham for seven years. <laughs> so Switzerland. Compare Switzerland. You know, just a normal day in your country, uh, and and Gorham, Maine. Would you be facing these same kind of uh, criticisms or or whatnot in Switzerland if you were the the extreme aerial view guy there? I'm not sure. Um, my dad's actually coming next week. I'm gonna ask him the question. But uh, I went there in February, yeah. and I took my quad copter with me and went to the Swiss Alps, and I didn't have any issues with nobody. And I yeah. asked my friend who's a cop over there, and he said. No, there is no regulation. You can just fly. You know, obviously, it's you know common sense. Don't fly by airport. Right. You know, but people do it here, anyways. But yeah. I never done it, and I don't see the value of doing it. You know, yeah. just taking my business and a big risk. So right, right. Yeah. Plus, you've got expensive equipment here. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't need to put it in danger. No. Nope. So, so you talked about a life saving. You know, somebody is drowning. The Coast Guard might deploy some of these and have yep. life life jacket deployment. Um, it could happen. I would imagine uh, 
you know, a, a fire department wanting to get a look up above, you know, they could send a drone up and take a look or... Yeah, I got a great story about that one. Go ahead. Uh, fire department. Uh, a friend of mine who uh, owned one of those is a volunteer at the fire department and uh, they had like a big trail with the fire mm -hmm. and the trailer was full of dynamite. So instead of sending people over with, you know, people, people be a big risk, yeah. they send the drone over to see the distance between the trail and the flames they were far enough to go to send the people to take the to fire down. To safely go. Yeah. Wow. But that was, you know. <laughs> Without so risking yeah, somebody. Exactly. People's life, you know. So, um, as, we, as, you know, technology advances, um, I know that uh, we saw a bad press. We saw a, uh, a quadcopter flying at Wimbledon. Yeah. And, and crashed in the stands. Well, U.S. That's Open, too. At, at, the US, at the U.S. Open as well. So, um, you know, like anything else, probably 5% of the laws are in, are in place, or 95% of the laws are in place because of 5% of the people. Yeah. I think that this is going to be one of those things where, exactly. where we have that, that we're all going to deal with. But I'd like to think, you know, because I've seen some pretty cool stuff and some pretty valuable stuff, yep. that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater here. No. So they what do you a, think from yep. your business, your industry's point of view, how, how do you continue to educate. This is great to have a little TV show with us here in yeah. Forum and to show some examples of some positive work with it. How, how else are you going to do that on a broad scale? How are we going to let folks know? Well, it's just about education. Do like maybe a day. Like when I go to events, I'll do a lot of uh, race, like swimming. You know, I'm able to go like uh, a 5K or like a, they swim, they yep. bike, and they run. I'm able to go 2,500 feet in the ocean, 20 feet above water to get some great shot for them. But like races, so I got a, I have a booth there with a TV yeah. and give information to people. They can ask questions. I'm always open to answer any questions people that have, you know. So that would have been you at the Peaks to Portland swim. I Not only was. could you have followed swimmers out there, yep. you could have really, you could have been a safety view. Yeah, exactly, it can be. I mean, yeah. You can get really close. That yep. guy's in trouble. Nobody's watching. Yeah. Um, same thing with if it was a 5K, 10K, or a, uh, mar you know, a, a, a triathlon or whatever. I mean, there's some probably some really cool stuff oh, that yeah. captures, you know, that entire, that people never see. Nope. You know, the runner sees it or maybe a spectator right at that time and moment. I got to also think that probably in some tighter situations, if you had a fugitive on the loose. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to, you know, I mean, if we were in L.A., they'd send the traffic helicopter up, right? And yeah. And they'd, they'd be tracing that around. Yeah. But uh, last I know, Gorham doesn't have a helicopter, so probably <laughs> we might want to, uh, yeah. you know, get a hold of somebody like you and say, hey, I think there's something going on in this section. Yeah. You know, can you help us out, take a look? Probably doesn't do much good at night, but otherwise. Well, there, there's a system now for infrared, you know, with so these heat can go sensor. In? Yeah. Heat sensor infrared. Well, it's expensive, you know, yeah. attachment, but they can they can do it. Wow. You know, yeah, they can do it. So so what is the legal side of, of this, this whole world? I mean, public domain is public domain. You go up, you take a picture, you do your thing. Yeah, 400 feet up. That's the limit feet. from the okay. FAA, 400 feet. Um, that toy can go 1.2 mile away, and I have a push the limit. I don't see the reason, you know, to yeah. push the limit. It's expensive, right. and I don't need to go that far, and even that high. You know, I don't, you know, I don't see the value. So already we've got the the FAA is involved, and they've established 400 feet. Um, we know the the technology is bigger than what a reasonable person would use. Yep. Um, didn't I just see something in the news recently about some college students? They sent one up into space, and it actually was, was know, recording I didn't see that doing one. something. I see one guy who attached a gun to different equipment, but yep. he put a gun on it, and he ended up in jail. Yeah. That and that's, that's the right way to do it. And you know, he should they, end yeah. up in jail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one thing. You hear about you know kids with those laser pointers and all yep. this kind of stuff. Sometimes, you know, it's really unfortunate that, they're, you know, we have these crazies that just take, take it too far. Yep. But let's go back to the positives because we saw a great day camp video. We know that you're doing some commercial business down, um, uh, down in Old Orchard on the pier, um, down, uh, you know, along the coast. We know that, you know, I, I would think that a realtor would, would love to have, you know, yeah. this kind of information out there. Um, and I got to think that other than... You know, if I was looking at, at a large construction site or I wanted to yep. do some monitoring, you know, there's time-lapse photo, 
which which is so old school compared to this, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to wait a long time to get your time lapse. You could come through, zing, 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 and yep. actually show something. What do you What do you hope happens? What do you hope the future is bringing? Um, I, I hope the FA will come with like some kind of regulation. I mean, some laws. Um, maybe do something like a, a gun safety course, like a full day of training. Mm -hmm. um, pass some tests. Make sure you know how to fly it safe and privacy. And if somebody do something stupid and yeah. you know ruin people's privacy and go people's backyards, big fine. I think they're already doing that, you know. But they need to push it, you know, more. So not only could the FAA help without in regulating that, there's probably going to be some sanctions that cities and towns will do regardless, yes. and then state level, and then federal level, which of course you're not supposed to be near the airport and, yep. and that kind of stuff. Um, I can imagine that there's some people who. Uh, still will always have that, oh, that's just Big Brother looking in my backyard. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I appreciate my privacy as much as the next, but uh, if the Google car is driving by my house and they're mapping me, yeah. um, and the Google thing's going over my house and mapping me, and I really want my cell phone to work, and if, without that satellite going over, I suppose I don't get my transmission, right? Yep. Um, and I'm not sure how to, how to legislate common sense uh, and how to do that, but it seems like this particular business and this particular technology is sort of right on the right on the edge of going like psh. yeah it's i mean again it's all go back to education and honest and people need to understand what we do and then i mean it's if i go 150 feet up in the sky with this and then you ride down on the street i can't see anything i can't see your face it's mm -hmm. way up there so yeah. unless you like 15 feet above somebody you know that's no privacy Right. problems unless you're buzzing them yeah well I, I I've been doing weddings too and then they love it you know by the ocean by the lake oh, beautiful. and then I stay 150 feet up and then you see the ceremony but you can't see people's face yeah so yeah Um, you know, what I'd like to see is maybe maybe we'll have some uh, joint partnership down the road where we actually do a day of demonstration. Yeah, that'd be you know, awesome. Gormek says, okay, you want to know more about this, this quadcopter business? Steve's going to be here. We're going to go out on the field. Come yep. on, he'll talk to you about it and show you what it can do and, and, uh, and, and how you can, can capture 
um, some uh, experiences of your own. You know, maybe there are those people that didn't know, never yeah. thought of that wedding idea or that family reunion that's happening at their lake or, you know, they're out on the boat. Yeah. Uh, the kids' first time water skiing, and you're exactly. there until yeah, they get be, it. That's kind of fun. Uh, which would be a great view from from yeah. uh, up above as opposed to the one on the boat that everybody <laughs> yeah. has, you know, that's yeah. doing that. Yeah. So I want to give you a chance to see this at home. Maybe maybe Steve could take a minute and fire this up for us so we can look at it and see what it really does and, and talk about, you know, what it is and what you might hear and how it looks. Why don't you go ahead and All right. fire this up? We'll start this quad up to here. So the game, the game is going to calibrate itself. Then we'll turn the remote on and the app. So basically, you got a little iPad, a little mini iPad, an app, yep. a super controller, and then it's talking to each other. And there we are. Live stream. It's 720. Okay. You know, pretty much HD. Pretty. Yep. Pretty amazing. It's live stream um, up here. You can see satellites. We're inside a building, so we can get really satellites. A lot right. of, you know, a lot of <laughs> electronics in here. here right. Yeah, but this uh, is what the studio looks like, though. Yeah, there you go. We can, and then you can look at the gimbal. So when I'm flying, the gimbal always stay nice and stable. And if I, if I turn too quick, it's gonna just make it nice and smooth. Oh. So it is. Yeah. That's that's this little gizmo right here. He's yeah. talking about gimbal, and then that's called a gimbal. A gimbal, yeah. Okay. And propeller is very dangerous. Yep. No, they turn at 5,200 RPMs. Uh, and these are all made of a thick plastic? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Altitude, so if you want to have this take off from here, can you do that? If I, I move? Yeah. And then we can just get a wide view of it. You can maybe hear it at home, what it sounds like when it's buzzing. In case you hear one of these in your backyard, maybe you didn't know a big, a big giant uh, hummingbird. That's, Whoa, there it goes. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit. Tell me about some of this video. We're going to dub some video here, and you can talk out about uh, talk about it. So you went down to Old Orchard Beach, and you captured what? Sh tell us what we're well, looking at. Some you know bars and hotels that hire me to do like promotional videos, like mm -hmm. quick one minute to thirty mm -hmm. seconds for like events, uh, live music band, uh, the uh, park, you know, with all the rides. So you were at Palace Playland, yep. maybe at the Brunswick, exactly. Uh, along Old Orchard Beach, that's great. Yep. Um, we're going to get you to do some uh, uh, aerial view of Little Falls Rec Area Perfect. and our new uh, soccer field that just got planted that's in, in the works. So we're going to get a look at that and see how it's doing. And after the monsoon rain that we had recently, uh, we certainly hope that we saved the field. So we'll take a look at that. <laughs> You know, I got to think that there's a market for folks like you in the main tourism industry mm -hmm. or, you know, some of those other pockets that, uh, you know, again, the good stuff. The, <laughs> yeah. the, this is the good stuff. This is our main. This is what we look yeah. like. 
uh, and, and why not share it with people? Um, well, Steve, I think that Extreme Aerial View is a wicked awesome company, a great idea. I appreciate you reaching out to Gorham Rat to uh, capture our little Kodak moments from <laughs> above that we've done, and I look forward to a partnership with you in the future. I know that uh, we're working on some... Uh, some training opportunities here with GoCat in Georgia. And, yep. and folks, you're going to be able to see that. You're going to see how we got trained. Uh, pretty <laughs> soon you're going to be like, oh, look, they've been out there with that guy Steve. Yeah, because uh, it's really good stuff. And I think that uh, I want to thank Steve for coming in. Uh, Gorm Business, if you're looking for something in extreme aerial there views, he's our guy. We're going to run his... Uh, his uh, Website uh, along the bottom here, so you can check, or you could give us a call at GoCat or at Gorm Rec, and we'll be happy to uh, hook you up with Steve so that you can see just what this kind of uh, aerial quadcopter business can do for you and how you can benefit from somebody like Steve working with you. Till the next time we find somebody cool in Gorm that's doing something that nobody else is doing, I'm Cindy Hazelton from Gorm Rec. I want to thank Georgia and Buddy at GoCat and Steve for coming in. We'll talk to you again on our next adventure. Thanks.